Hi guys, it's Carol. How are ya? This is part two of my mind thinking in circles. Thank you so much for coming back for part two. I was afraid nobody would. In part two, I'm going to tell you about the rest of the library books that we uh, got today. So here they come. I hope you find something you'd like to read too. If you do, let me know, okay? All right, here they come. We're going to pick up where I split the very long video I made. So this is the middle of that video. Well, anyway, that book about World War II, written by Jennifer Ryan, brought me to this book called The Wedding Dress, Sewing Circle. See how things go in a circle? I was going to buy geraniums when all this came about. The Wedding Dress, Sewing Circle, a novel by Jennifer Ryan. Okay, this one says, Three women lift the spirits of home front brides in wartime Britain when clothes rationing leaves wedding dresses scarce in this heartwarming novel based on true events. After renowned fashion designer Cressetta Westcott loses both her home and her design house in the London Blitz, she has nowhere to go but the family manor house she fled dec decades ago. Praying that her niece and nephew will be more hosp hospitable than her brother had been, Grisida arrives with nothing but the clothes she stands in, at a loss as how to rebuild her business while staying in a quaint country village. Grisida's niece, niece, Violet Westcott, is thrilled that her famous aunt is coming to stay. The village has been interminably dull with all the men off fighting, but just as Grisida arrives, so does Violet's Conscription letter. I have no idea what a conscription letter is. I'll have to look that up. It couldn't have come at a worse time. How will she ever find a suitable aristocratic husband if she has to spend her days wearing a frumpy uniform and doing war work? Meanwhile, the local vicar's daughter, Grace Carlisle, is trying in vain to repair her mother's gown, her only chance of a white wedding. When Crisada appears at the local sewing circle meeting, Grace asks for her help. But Cressetta has much more to teach the ladies than gen just simple sewing skills. Before long, Cressetta's spirit and ab ambition galvanize the village group into action, and they find themselves mending wedding dresses not only for local brides, but for brides across the country. And as the women dedicate themselves to helping others celebrate love, they might even manage to find it for themselves. So, going to read that one. Now, somebody made their wedding dress out of a parachute. I'll find out some famous person. I'll find out who that was and let you know. I'll I found out what a conscription letter is. In 1941, Britain's Parliament passed basically a draft to draft all unmarried women and all childless widows between the ages of 20 and 30 to do non combatant work to keep everything going while the men went off to fight. So that was why she was talking about wearing a uniform and all that. It was her call to the draft. It was during this time that Queen Elizabeth, then 19 years old, and Princess Elizabeth joined an auxiliary to learn how to be a driver and a mechanic for her part of the war effort. Even though her parents did not want her to, she insisted that she be just like everybody else and contribute to um, keeping things going on the home front. I'll put that at the end. And because I wanted to read The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle, that led me to a book called The Perfect Dress by Carolyn Brown. Now, Carolyn Brown is my favorite author that lives in Oklahoma She's written over a hundred novels. Um, remember I told you the book about a funeral? She pretends like she killed her husband, but she didn't. <laughs> Maybe she has a funeral for him. And then another one. Oh, I've read several Carolyn Brown books. They are all good. Anyway, this is a Carolyn Brown book that I got because I looked up the wedding dress sewing circle. Okay, a custom made love story. In the small town of Celeste, Texas, Mitzi Taylor has never quite fit inside the lines. 
nearly six feet tall, flame-haired, and with a plus-size spirit to match every curve, she's found her niche at niche, a custom wedding dress boutique catering to big brides-to-be with big dreams. Taking the plunge alongside her two best friends, she's proud they turned the perfect dress into a perfect success. Just when Mitzi has it all pulled together, Graham Harrison walks back into her life looking for bridesmaid dresses for his twin daughters. A still strapping jock whose every gorgeous towering inch smells like aftershave, the star of all of Mitzi's high school dreams is caught, causing quite a flush. For Mitzi, all it takes is a touch to feel sparks fleeing around her like fireflies. She can just imagine what a kiss could do. Graham's feeling it too, and he's about to make the imagination of Mitzi's run wild. Is it just a hot summer fling, or are Mitzi's next designs for herself and seeing her own dreams come true? So far, the, the these are like soft romance, I'm going to call them. They don't get very explicit or ugly talk, anything like that, of Carolyn Brown's that I've read so far. Okay. And then because I was going for geraniums and I ended up these books about wedding dresses, I found the sewing, Southern Sewing Circle series. Now, I know I've read some of these, but you know my memory is lousy. And um, I looked it up at the library, and yes, they have them. In the Sewing Circle, there are 12 books in this series so far. I know I've read some, but I decided, you know what? I think I will just take the first book and start over. It's We've got four more books to go. Hang with me. Okay, The Southern Sewing Circle is by Elizabeth Lynn Casey. I know that name. I know I, I really like her books. I couldn't tell you the name of one right now for anything. But anyway, she wrote Sewing Deadly, the first mystery in this Cozy mystery series called Southern Sewing Circle. I should have done this on a day when I could actually read without stumbling over words, but oh well. Uh, ever since she moved to Sweetbriar, South Carolina, Tori's been the talk of the tiny town, but she's been so busy adding a children's corner to the library, winning over the women of the sewing circle, and trying to forget her cheesing cheating ex that she hasn't had time to even base together a pillow, never mind pay attention to the local gossip. Then she finds the town's sweetheart dead at her back door and everything else falls by the wayside. Everyone believes the police investigator, who's just fixing to link Tori to the murder in a love triangle gone bad through a handsome third grade teacher, to clear her name, Tori will have to rely on her new sewing sisters and stitch together the truth or else be darned. I, all I know is I did like this series and I'm going to start over with book one. And somehow that brought me to a book called Sweet Tea B&B. &B. This is a cozy mystery series by Rachel Hanna. I believe it, it's a cozy mystery. I've never read one of hers, but Sweet Tea T B and B is the name of the series and the first book, and so far there are six titles in the series. This is a very slender book. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. I've got my new my new um, tripod came in, and we can make it aim down, and I can't even see what you're seeing right now. You may be just seeing my plastic tablecloth. Okay, two sisters who have no idea the other exist. A beautiful bed and breakfast in the Blue Ridge Mountains of northern Georgia. An online DNA test that throws everybody for a loop. Kate never quite felt like she fit in, but she never let it stop her from pursuing her dreams. When her life takes a turn she never expects, she finds herself facing the choice of a lifetime. That was Kate. Mia is a true Southern belle. When her mother passes away, she starts rebuilding her life by running Sweet Tea B&B, &B, her mother's beloved inn. When two lives cross paths in the most unusual way, will family bonds run deep or break hearts? If you love Southern women's fiction with clean romance and a small town feel, the Sweet Tea B&B &B series will be will warm your heart and leave you with a smile. No, 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 it's okay for those people to be out there. They live here too. They can use the sidewalk. 
Okay. The one I'm reading right now is a part of a food blogger, food blogger mystery. It's a cozy mystery. Author's name is Deborah Seinfelder. I'm starting on book two because I ended up, somehow I ended up with nothing to read, but this one, and Casey was reading book one. Uh, book one is called Uninvited Corpse. And there are six books in this series. Casey, you're making a lot of noise. Sorry. She's digging in the freezer looking for a package of frozen sister Schubert rolls. Okay, food blogger Hope Early finds one item not on her scavenger hunt list, a dead husband. Between developing her food blog, Hope at Home, and choosing locale recipes for a feature in Cooking Now magazine, Hope has a full plate. Still, she's never too busy to compete in a Jefferson, Connecticut tradition, the town's annual scavenger hunt. But as she races with her team to check off the next item, Hope discovers a grisly surprise. The body of a shady real estate developer, Lionel Whitcomb, shot in a parking lot. His wife, Elaine, who's also in the scavenger hunt, gasps and nearly faints. But two other women on the scene cry out that that's their husband. <laughs> it turns out this louse of a spouse was more than a little lax in legally divorcing his former wives. Did one of them put the bullet in the bigamist? Number one suspect and number three wife, Elaine, begs Hope to investigate. Now Hope is on a new kind of hunt for a cold-hearted killer and triple widow maker. And that's the Food Blogger Mystery Series by Deborah Seinfelder. Okay, the last book, Casey, when she, I had put those books on hold. And when Casey went in to pick them up, she picked this one off the shelf for herself. It's called A Haunted Ghost House Mystery, first in a new series. Author is E.J. Copperman. Now let me look. This is an old book. It's first in the series, but there are now 10 books in the series. This, the first one is Night of the Living Deed, not Dead, Deed. Let's see what it says. Seven bedrooms, four baths, two ghosts. Newly divorced Allison Kirby wants a second chance for herself and her nine-year-old daughter. So she's returned to her hometown on the Jersey Shore to transform a fixer-upper into a charming and hopefully hopeful, of, I'm so sorry, I can't read or talk, hopefully profitable guest house. But when a bump on the head leaves her seeing not only stars, but spirits, Allison realizes the real challenge she's facing is out of this world. The two residing ghosts are Maxie Malone, the foul-tempered former owner of the house who has definite opinions about Alice's design plans, and Paul Harrison, a private eye who's been working for Maxie. Both died in the house on the same night. The official cause of death was suicide, but the ghost insists they were <laughs> murdered. And they need Allison to find out who killed them, or the next ghost in the guest house will be Allison herself. This is a cozy mystery, not quite as gruesome as it sounds. Anyway, Andy's again announcing that it's dinner time, and he's the boss around here. So I'm going to go, and um, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for leaving me comments. I realize I'm way behind on answering them. I just get overwhelmed over some things, and... And that's one of the things I get overwhelmed about. But anyway, I love reading them. And I love hearing from you. And I love getting to know you guys. Okay, that's what I'm reading. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Or if you want to read any of these books. Or if you know of a good cozy mystery. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you could, please. That helps me make money. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.